Welcome to Network Africa. Coming up on the program, Presidential Commission says Burundians want presidential term limits abolished. Then South African Finance Minister Pravin Gordon summoned for questioning. And from Egypt, two photographers launch ballerinas of Cairo. Hello everyone, I am VC Adebayo. We'll begin in Burundi where reports say the country may scrap the presidential term limits from its constitution. Well, this comes after a commission set up to hear public views on governance stated that most citizens want no curbs on the number of times the head of state may seek re-election. The chairman of the commission, set up by President Pierre Nkurunziza to seek public opinion on the country's political system, confirms that most Burundians want the president to exercise more than two terms in office. Last year, the country was plunged into a political crisis after the president announced that he was running for a third term. The constitution limits a president to only two elected terms, but Mr. Nkurunziza's lawyers successfully argued in the constitutional court that his first term did not count as he was appointed by members of parliament. Well, joining us on the program is VOA correspondent who is in Nairobi following the story, Mohammed Yusuf. Thank you for joining us, Mohammed. Now, what do you make of this report that most Burundians want the presidential term limits scrapped? There's something, there's something very clear here, and it, it looks like uh, the government of Burundi has taken advantage of the crisis that has been taking place in, in Burundi more than a year now. And again, one thing that is coming out of this is that uh, at the time when there was a political crisis and demonstrations last year, around May, June, July, and before the presidential election, many opposition members feared that if, for example, that uh, President uh, Pierre Nkurunziza will be allowed to run for a third term, which was last year, again, nothing will stop him again running come 20, uh, come another general election. But this now, whatever their fears were at the time, is becoming very clear. But again, one issue that the oppositions have raised so far is that the president so far is, is talking to people who are very close to him, people who are his friends, while his opponents, most of them who are in exile, uh, he doesn't want to consult them, he doesn't want to talk to them politically. Again, it's, it's not surprising and it, it's something very clear here. The government of Burundi has taken advantage of the crisis that has been there you know, more than a year. Well, what role should the African Union play in the political crisis in the country? Um, to be honest, for, for, for example, for African Union, they, they, haven't, they haven't said much about this issue of time limits and the where some leaders interpret, interpret the, the constitution. And again, there's no clear stand on, on about these time limits. But again, there's a big problem now here that the African Union has to solve, and this is something that is sweeping across the continent. And there's, there's a growing concern that maybe if this is not stopped, it's going to create no problems in the continent. But again, one, clear, one thing that the African Union needs to do is, is, is to look way to, to resolve some of these issues, and especially the issue of constitution. Again, one thing that has been, always been a problem is there hasn't been a clear stand on many issues about the African Union, about issues that is taking place in the continent by the African Union. And this is something that the, the, the Union has to check. As, as, as many countries as, as the continent moves forward. Well, if it finally scales through, what impact is this likely to have on the country itself? I think the impact is there now. We, recently we have seen uh, President Kabila of Democratic Republic of Congo change the constitution. Uh, recently, again, the neighbor, Rwanda, changed the constitution. And, and then we understand Kagame can run again next year. And you, you see, it's not something this is many countries are taking advantage of that. They say, look, if uh, Pierre Nkurunziza can get away with it for just interpretation of a, of a constitution, how about us, uh, those of us who can say, okay, let's go for a referendum? Again, it, 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 it's a precedent that is taking place in the country. For example, now in this region, 
these five countries who have come together is called East African and Community Bloc. And so far, three of them does not recognize the issue to do with, with time limits. The only countries that recognize, for example, is Kenya and Tanzania. And, for example, when it comes to the issue of solving that, it's very hard for, for a country like Kenya and Tanzania to talk about time limits, while Uganda, Rwanda and Burundi, uh, they don't care about, uh, for example, the issue of time limits. Again, this is something that will, will, take, will take another dimension, and many African leaders will take advantage of, of that. And, uh, we'll be expecting more referendums in years to come, or months or years to come. Well, well, you've talked about the impact on Kenya and Burundi, for instance, but what about the other African countries? Is this likely going to have any impact on their political system? Yeah, of course it, it will, and and this is because these people, for example, we understand so far the African Union they have they don't have a clear stand on this issue. Now, one of when that happens, then it shows it it, it sends a message that look seems like no one cares. And for example, if you have a leader in Western country, for example, Burkina Faso or in Guinea, then they can say, look ahead, East Africa have done it. The African Union haven't said anything. There's no clear stand. For us, we can go ahead and do it. And then, again, we go, with that happening, then we'll see more, because the content is growing, we have more youths now, and we will see more protests. Burundi, we have seen. We have seen Burkina Faso. We've seen recently in Democratic Republic of Congo. And this is something that we will, will be expecting, many people expect, actually, analysts to see in the, in the continent. And this is something many countries will take advantage of in, in other parts of the continent. Now, let's take you back to the people of Kenya. But do, is this really a true representation of what they want? Sorry, come again? I'm asking if this is actually a true representation of what the Kenyans want. Do you think that they actually want this to scale through? Again, this is, is, is about the people, and, and, and this has been, for example, the same issue you've just raised now, if people want. We've seen examples, um, in, um, for example, in Zimbabwe, Mugabe saying, this is the will of the people, and they want me to say. We've seen our neighbour, for example, here in, 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 in Uganda, Museveni saying the same thing. But again, it, after a very long time, that's if people, many youths are fatigued. For example, in Museveni, we've seen what's been going on during elections early this year. Um, we've seen how opponents or opposition members are treated, and how we understand Zimbabwe is something. Again, you've, you've mentioned a very important point here. What if people really want their leaders to continue? That is another question altogether. But again, you have to respect the will of the people, again, at the same time, above all and everything that are people and, and the entire country that have, they have to respect is a constitution that is in place. This constitution has been there before anyone else or many, any of those the leaders, and then they have to respect that. I guess that is the most important thing. But again, for the will of the people, we always stand in, in the democratic space of, uh, uh, in, in the continent. Well, Mohammed, why does it appear that the issue of tenure elongation is always a big deal, sort of, in the African continent? Okay, well, we uh, seem to have lost Mohammed there. Mohammed uh, Yusuf is a correspondent with the Voice of America. But moving on now, a monitoring, a monitoring group, FuseNet, has warned that humanitarian aid is urgently needed in South Sudan in order to save lives. FuseNet, which tracks food prices and harvest, says last month's conflict in and around the capital, Juba, severely disrupted food supplies, leading to prices rising to about 10 times their average. The report adds that the price hike comes as households enter a lean period ahead of harvest next month, which may be lower than expected because of the renewed displacement of people that fighting or that the fighting course. They say given these extremely high food prices, food security is deteriorating even more than previously anticipated. And veteran South African anti-apartheid campaigner Desmond Tutu has checked into a Cape Town hospital for a recurrent infection. According to his daughter, he's expected to remain in hospital for about a week or two. The 84-year-old Archbishop and Neville Pierce Lorette underwent similar treatment last year. It's unclear what infection Archbishop Tutu is suffering from, but his family say it's not related to the prostate cancer he has been living with for nearly 20 years. When Network Africa returns in a moment, all eyes in South Africa are the headquarters of the elite police units which has summoned the finance minister for questioning.